Today, we're gonna to talk about different pricing models that you can use to implement for your web design business. Now, most of you are probably getting started with web design, you're kind of venturing off, you're doing your own thing. And there's an article by Elegant Themes created by Josh Hall that I was reading a few years ago that I really found beneficial. And in this video, I'm gonna kind of give you the pros and cons of it and give you my personal experience of all of these pricing models, which ones I would use, which ones I would not use, etc. Now, first one is probably the most popular one, which is flat pricing. So basically saying, you know, how much uh, how much does this website cost me, Daryl? I have a five-page website, what's the price? Now, there's a lot of pros and cons to that, but this can all be learned kind of by trial and error, you know? So when I first started, I was charging websites for like a thousand bucks, dude. It was it was bad. Like I was just like, yeah, I'll take anything I can get. And later down the road, I realized I shot myself in the foot because I would have to work on these projects I spent too much time on. Now that's probably one big con of flat pricing. However, you can do something like, you know, a five page website, $1,500 a 10 page website, et cetera. Now, what you can do here, and what I learned from my experience is, usually when you have a client out there who says, I want a five page website, you can say, all right, I'll charge you around $1,500 for that. However, if you want something like a booking system or a booking integration, or you want something like a membership integration, that would be charged on an hourly basis because that will actually protect you from your client. You're gonna come across that, you're gonna realize that your clients are nightmares and, and you can be a therapist sometimes because when I was building websites, people were sitting there telling me about their problems and their girlfriend and their boyfriend and you know they wanna start this new business and nothing's working out. And I'm just like, I was like, okay, so you want a website or you want a therapist? Which one do you want? And that's that's really what you're gonna come across. People like to talk about themselves and their problems and that's okay, you know, you just have to, it's part of the business. You have to just sit there and appease them and accommodate them as, as best as you can. Now, again, what I did was I would charge a flat rate and then tell them, um, if you want a booking system or membership websites, uh, that's gonna be on an hourly basis because uh, that again protects you because you don't know how long it's gonna take to make a membership website because what happens is these wonderful clients will go, well, I want this now, Daryl, I wanna change it to this. And you can say, sure, because you're on the hourly basis. But if you did something like telling them that you want a $2,000 membership website, now you're stuck because they're gonna expect that you have to keep changing stuff at a budget of $2,000. So that's personally what I did. I kind of did a combination of both where I said, I'll give you the flat rate and then I'll charge you uh, an hourly rate for custom work. So flat pricing always works pretty good. Personally, I would charge somewhere on the lines of $1,500 to $2,000 for five page websites. And then if they wanted something else, we would go from there. Now, it also depends on how you present yourself. You know, Do you want or do you present yourself with a good image? Because that right there is very important. If you have a website that looks really professional and that you know what you're talking about, customers will feel more inclined and better to pay you more money. Some people don't care about the money, guys, because some people just want a good website. They don't care what it costs, and you have to remind clients that the website is a representation of themselves. Now, here we have custom pricing, and custom pricing is one of the most popular methods for web design businesses out there because they like to, it gives you more control over the situation. So for example, uh, people would say, you know, Daryl, I, I want a five to 10 page website. I do want a membership login page. I want to go ahead and see how that works. And with custom pricing, you can go ahead and sit there and say, all right, let me get back to you. Or let me, let me uh, write you a proposal. And speaking of proposals, I will be having a web design course soon. And proposals are crucial. You need to have just beautiful proposals because proposals are a representation of yourself to your clients. If you have a very professional, well-rounded proposal, people are gonna look at it and say, man, this is a lot. Like, like this guy knows what he's this guy knows what he's doing, you know, and that can lead to a sale. And usually, you know, um, here they say that projects fall around fifteen hundred dollars to three thousand dollars, depending on the the clients. And that's true, you know, um, if a client wants an e-commerce website, I would charge somewhere on the lines of five to seven thousand dollars because I'm not sure, like, what else they're gonna want. And e-commerce websites to me were always tricky because uh, what happens is they would call me and say, "I have another product. I have another product. I have another product." 
And it's out of the scope of the quote. So at that point, you would have to tell them before you sign something saying, um, this is fine, but um, this is a quote. And if you require more, then you know we'll have to go from there, et cetera. And, and again, remember, when you're making these deals with these clients is you want to make them feel confident and you want them happy because referrals are the number one way to get more business. I've always found that referrals were just magic because if you do a really good job for someone, they're going to recommend them, recommend you to their mom, their their dad, their friend, their girlfriend, their dog, whatever, you know, and that's a great way on how to get more clients. And that's how I got a lot of my, my business was referrals. Next, we have hourly pricing. And I don't recommend hourly pricing whatsoever because, well, it depends on the person because I'm sort of like a, a, a get it done, I want the results, let me see it. I want a price, that's it. But other people are more understanding and saying, well, okay, that sounds fair, maybe we can work something out. But the problem is with hourly pricing is I can't see you work. So what are you doing? Are you are you on Facebook all day? What are you doing? So I can't see it and I don't even know how much it costs. Now with hourly prices, you can always give them a ballpark range, but I find that a solid price is something that's just, uh, to the human brain, people are saying, okay, I can see the price visually, this is how much it costs, it's within my budget, that's fine. Hourly pricing, it's kind of saying, well, we'll work on it and then we'll go from there, we'll see how much it costs. And personally, I'm just not a fan of hourly pricing. Even if I were to hire someone, they're saying, well, uh, I'm like a $15 per hour, something like that. I'm like, no, 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 man, I'll give you a hundred bucks for the project. Something like that, I feel more confident with. But again, that's my personality. And in web design, you're gonna have to accommodate different personalities and Different pricing structures will actually work for different personalities and that's just how it goes. Next, you have a very old model of per, price, per page pricing. I'm not a fan of this whatsoever and this is because, let's say for instance, you have a 10 page website and let's say for instance, they want to add, uh, let's say for instance, they wanna add a membership on one of the pages or something like that. You know, you can't really charge uh, a, a membership uh, website with this pricing model. And personally, uh, sometimes other pages require more work than the others. So the home page requires a lot more work than the contact us page, right? So this model right here, I think is a little outdated. I do see people on Fiverr using this model, but I think for the average consumer or the average web design designer, I don't think this is a good model at all. And I would not recommend it personally because it's a really good way on how to make yourself work a lot harder for little money. Next you have the initial setup and monthly retainer fee. This is something like Wix or web.com where you would charge them like 500 bucks and then charge them $100 a month for keeping the website up. And personally, uh, just don't do that model. It's not a good model because what happens was people are gonna say uh, two months down the road, hey man, I don't want the site no more. And guess what? You just lost a lot of money because you should have got more money out of them at the time. So you wanna get as much money as you can for these clients out uh, out as soon as possible. Now, whenever you build a, a website for someone, and uh, again, I will be having a web design course very soon, but um, you need to inform these people that you're using WordPress and WordPress needs to be updated. So you must offer a maintenance package. I had one friend who was in web design and wasn't offering maintenance packages and I says, bro, once these once these clients get these projects, the website eventually will break because what happens was, let's say WordPress automatically updates to a version of a PHP that's not compatible, what's gonna happen is the site could possibly break. What happens when you have a plugin that's not compatible with the PHP updates? So you need to make sure that you have a maintenance package and you need to inform them that they really, really need this because you're using WordPress and you need to make sure everything's up to date. So I would charge somewhere in the lines of 150 per month. Um, and that was to host the website. And that was also to uh, keep everything updated because sometimes when you update something, something might conflict, et cetera. And that's a really good reason on to make backups or even to roll back the version because um, if you're on a maintenance plan, if they're on a maintenance uh, plan and you update something and it breaks, you have, you have to rebuild the website and you wanna make sure you can roll it back or at least have a copy or something like that. And don't feel don't feel afraid to charge them like 150 to $200 a month. These people don't care about what you're doing. They're just like, all right, 150 bucks a month to keep my website up, that's fine. I mean, real estate agents make like five to $10,000 a month. 
they need that website up at all times. They don't care about $150 a month, $200, and they're not sitting there like researching every a hosting company to find out, oh, can I get it cheaper? Can I get it cheaper? They want the security. They want someone that just knows what they're doing and that can handle it when there's a problem. So um, that's my experience with pricing models. I find that uh, package, or I'm sorry, the flat is actually pretty good in combination with hourly because, again, you don't want to um, you don't want to take projects that you're working a lot harder on. And another thing too, speaking of taking projects, don't feel afraid to reject clients. Sometimes you're going to come across clients that just can't work with you because they're unreasonable. They want the moon and the stars and they don't want to pay a lot of money. <laughs> they, they go to Amazon, they go, I want this website. I got a thousand dollars. And then you just say, well, you can go to Wix.com and uh, there you go. You know, you can redirect them to a, give them, give them an affiliate link, you know, something like that. But uh, don't feel, don't feel obligated to take every customer because I personally did that and I learned the hard way, guys. I mean, I, I had this one client, she's probably watching this video and it was a Vietnamese lady and she wanted this website and we went to lunch and after we went to lunch, she bought me a bunch of food and then she got got me like food to go and i think that's her way of payment and i even told her i was like oh it's gonna be this much and she's like i bought you lunch i said uh honey um lunch does not equal website <laughs> so i mean i've had horror experiences too guys like i had to build a tarot card website and the lady like had these just like bizarre requirements, dude. And I was just like, I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. So, uh, but again, uh, don't feel afraid to walk away from clients if they're not reasonable because you can't help everyone, and um, your time is valuable, you know. So uh, when you're when you're getting started with web design, don't get desperate, and also don't take projects you can't handle. There was another. I'm not gonna say the name. There's another uh, website that teaches you how to be a web designer, and they were saying you can charge ten thousand dollars for a web design, a WordPress website. Now that's semi true because usually websites that require that much money, you would need some development work on it. And if you are not a developer, it's not fair for you to charge someone ten thousand dollars if you can't provide some sort of development work because you might have to at that point. So. Uh, that's just uh, my 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 advice. But I will be having a web design course, and it's gonna go and talk about everything, especially when your client says that's too expensive or why is it so expensive. I love when people say that. Why is it so expensive? Because that's my pitch. That's my way of saying, all right, let me tell you why. And then boom, 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 boom. And then don't give them a reason to say it's expensive, saying, uh, if you don't take this, you're an idiot. <laughs> you know, it's a, it's a lot of selling. It's a lot of trying to uh, win clients over. And it's not really about web design at that point. You know, web design is like 30% of the actual business. 70% is handling the clients and making business deals. And um, I will be making uh, more videos and courses on that because uh, people have been asking me a lot and guys, I've been there. I have been there, I've, I did it for years and I've had great clients, I've had nightmare clients, I've made some really stupid decisions and I made some good decisions. So I'll be sharing that in my course. But again, my name is Daryl Wilson. Hopefully this video is helpful. Let me know your horror stories or your pricing model in the description below in this video. I will see you guys all later.